Welcome back, folks, to Bits One Puck. I'm your host, Mr. Intangibles, a PS5 excited boy and a hay fever sufferer, Dan Masters, with my good friend, the leader of Hockey Human Resources, and a man who might move to Bristol. Well, every human, well, how you doing? Uh, cold toes, mate. I've got really cold toes. Why is that? Just, uh, I just have, I have poor circulation uh, to start with, and I don't know, just, just cold toes. It's June, Dan, and it's wow. a rainy day, and I don't want to put the heating on because it's June. So. <laughs> yeah. It is classic British weather wise. It is the middle of June and it's fucking hammering it down here. Mate, it's absolutely abs- chucking it down. F- fucking piss take. <laughs> absolute piss take. But I did have some turf put down the other day. So, uh, you know, swings around. Look at you, big Willie House owner over fucking, here with his turf. Ch- check me out, mate, with my, uh, with my quarter hectare. <laughs> a quarter hectare. <laughs> How big is a hectare? Like, I've no idea. It's, small, it's smaller than an acre, isn't it? Of course it is. I have no idea. No. Those kind of measurements to me are like distances to the sun. If you tell me a hectare is four square meters, I'd believe you. If you tell me it's a thousand square meters, I'd believe you. If if you tell me the sun's a million miles away, I'll believe you. If you tell me it's three trillion miles away, I'll believe you. I think it, I think it <laughs> I, is I, I, three trillion miles away. I think you might be. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah. <laughs> give, give or take. <laughs> give or take a trillion. It's it's around there. Actually, actual hockey news this week, which was uh, interesting. It mixed in with everything else, of course. And I think the lead thing is probably the Hockey Diversity Alliance was formed. Seven current and former NHL players announced on Monday that they have formed the Alliance, which has a mission to eradicate racism and intolerance in hockey. The group appointed San Jose Sharks for Devander Kane, former NHL player Akeem Malou as co-heads, and then named to the group's executive committee were uh, Red Wings player Trevor Daly, Wild defenseman Matt Dumber, Sabres forward Wayne Simmons, Flyers forward Chris Stewart, and former NHL player Joel Ward. And the group will operate independently of the NHL, but Kim Davis, the league's senior vice president of social impact, growth initiatives, and legislative affairs, said she hopes NHL and Alliance can work together. Will, your thoughts? Obviously, it's a good thing that it's happening. First off, yeah, we got we got... Um, current players and, and a very important former player in Joel Ward, who's who's very active in the community, heading it up, which is which is fantastic. The thing the thing that I don't understand is is what they're actually going to do. What because they're they're independent of the league, which is good in in a lot of senses, very good in a lot of senses. But then, what actual power are they going to have over the league to sort of instill change, or are they just going to be a bit of a lobbying group? Because, because the I think they're kind of is... going to be a bit of a lobbying group. And the idea could be that because they're separate to the league, they can just go to the league and say, how about we do this? And then the league can then... It, it, I think it does work in two ways. The league can then say, yeah, we don't quite like that idea. So they could sort of say no to ideas. But then the alliance can dead say, well, look, we've had ideas and you've not done any of them. This is ridiculous. So the league is kind of trying to hold itself accountable in some way, but I think it's going to be that. They're just going to go to the league and say, we've had these ideas, let's try and do some of them. It's, it's like a, a, a formal voice in the ear of the league from the BPOC community, which is... Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. That's that's a really good thing. But as as we've said with, with all these situations since since the George Floyd, George Floyd murder, it's, it's really good on paper, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, not that... Not that I don't think that the alliance itself is going to try and do good work. It's whether that good work is actually responded to and taken on and, and all that. Yeah, but, and, and I think it's a, at least the league's being proactive now that uh, sort of things like this are happening, as we said before. I mean, Pride Night, all those kinds of ideas, they're all good ideas. But after a couple of years, they just forget about it. Oh, there's Pride tape, but you can't really have it during a game because everyone will think that you like gay people or you are gay or you're different. And we can't have that. So you can't have it in a game because that's crazy. And you just hope that this is, maybe because there's seven players and this is such a hot button issue at the moment, maybe they'll do something. But I, I like the fact that the league's doing something at the moment. But again, we'll have to wait and see how it goes, I think. As, as far as I'm aware, this is the first sort of sort of group that is set up in this format, if that makes any sense. There's not like a... yeah. Uh, there's not like say a group of female players that are sort of allied with the NHL as as like we said a lobbying group to try and push forward inclusivity for women and and in the league. So I, I wonder if this would be like the first of many. If there would be say say a, a women's version, say an LGBTQ plus version, or you know whatever it might be. It was there was a couple of these this week with NHL, and it was on the other side of it. 
a swing and a miss, because they announced this panel and there's no women of colour on it. And now, a statement was put out a couple of hours afterwards saying that these seven, eight, seven NHLers were just a start, just to get this going. Yeah, and I can't, I can't imagine places... it's going to be an exclusive um, club of like, no. Nah, yeah, and, we, and more places are going to be seven. filled down the line with women, but you would have thought out of the gate, you would have thought, yeah, we should we should at least have some women in here to... So at the start, there's no comeback on any of this from any side of it. Yeah, especially where being sport, there's still an issue with you know, being a predominantly catered to, to men and the male gaze and all that sort of thing. You'd have, I'd have thought Angela James would be involved at some point. Yeah, you know, not to not to just trot out the yeah you know, the most obvious candidate, but hell, if you're gonna have somebody, yeah, you know, if you want a black woman of color who's who's allied with this alliance, <laughs> how many other a words can I use to describe an alliance? You'd have thought the most prominent black female member of the Hall of Fame would be the one you'd get involved, sort of thing. But and and, and maybe and she, she just didn't want her name on the on the on the cover or whatever it might be. It's it's like with yeah, the, that's the thing. And I mean, like we said before, some hockey players maybe just don't want to do things like this. They just don't want to be out there and talking about this kind of thing. Maybe they, you know, maybe she doesn't want to do it. I don't know. Maybe she will do it, but we we don't know about the inner workings of how it's put together. So so we can't yeah exactly comment. But yeah, bottom line is obviously a good thing <laughs> yeah and it's been set up by players and that's kind of at least like we've said we've, like over a hundred players have kind of put their thoughts out there this week and or in the past few weeks if it's either instagram twitter you know videos tweets you know with messages on anything like that like we said last week you can't sort of say i wish players would get involved and do something and then when they do just start saying straight away well, this is stupid. You haven't done anything. This is why we let's just give them a bit of chance to breathe and come back in a month and see how they're getting on. The NHL was in process, wasn't it? It's kind of in process now of creating an executive inclusion council, which is, I mean, just sounds, I'll be honest, ridiculous. It just doesn't sound like it's very inclusive. I don't know why. I know it's called the executive inclusion council, but it just doesn't sound, it doesn't sound right. You hear the words executive and council and you think of old white men. Yeah, to me, the Executive Inclusion Council will, will be a bunch of old white dudes telling young black players of both sexes what to do. <laughs> that just, that's just how that sounds to me. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I just think it doesn't sound good. Seeing, but, seeing in a dark room that seems impossibly large. Yeah, there's going to be apparently three committees representing different stakeholders. So there's going to be a player inclusion committee, a fan inclusion committee, and a youth inclusion committee. And here was the thing was... The, the Executive Inclusion Council is going to consist of five owners, five presidents, and two GMs. So, huh. as we said, <laughs> it's just a bunch of old white dudes sat at a table that's too big for them. That's the thing, like, as as good as the intentions potentially might be, and as it's the NHL, I highly doubt there are, What what's the point of having an inclusion council if the council has no inclusivity? <laughs> I know. Un- unless now, the, 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 player, the player side of it, is going to consist of current and former players, female players from Canada and the, U- and the US. The fan inclusion side of it is going to include the chief of marketing from NHL teams, um, partners uh, that the NHL has already worked with in much cultural space. And the youth inclusion side of it is going to include parents and leaders of youth hockey organisations. But I'm wondering if those seven NHL players, or former NHL players in Joel Ward's case, saw that executive inclusion council and thought, well, this isn't any good either. Like, we need to do something on our, off our own backs. And, I don't know, maybe. And to an extent, if the NHL are then still going to go ahead with their own player-led council or group or committee or whatever you want to call it, does that not sort of undermine what this alliance with Evander Kane and Akeem Alou are trying to form? Maybe. I'm not, I mean, it's not. it's certainly not been presented as kind of dueling factions, as it were. But if you've got one that's know, it, under the league umbrella and one that's not... It's, yeah, I know which one I'd prefer to listen to. Yeah, if you were obviously, going you know, back to not understanding the inner workings of, of all this, and again, it's so early that we haven't seen any of it in action yet, so we don't actually know how it's going to work. But for me, even just the optics of it, you've got off the back of, of one of the largest cultural shifts of certainly of my lifetime, you've got finally a formation of, of a player alliance to represent black people of colour, it's yeah. to then turn around and, and say, oh no, we're going to do our own one as well, just doesn't look good. 
it, it looks like you are instantly discrediting the, the independent player one. Well, or it could be that the league was doing their own one first, and like I said, so Akeem yeah, and then... McCain have kind of got together and said, oh shit, this doesn't look good, does it? We should do our own thing instead. And and if that is the case for the league to still carry on, because the league haven't... True, announced. yeah. As, yeah. They, I can't see what you're saying now, yeah, yeah. If they don't step back and say, all right, you guys have got this covered... You can, you know, sort of, especially where, like, it's, you've you've been elected from within your own community, rather than just Bill Daly saying, "Well, I had one phone call with Kevin Weeks for about eight minutes, so I think I'm up to speed on the on the situation." <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> but scary funny because it's probably true. <laughs> the kind of what's that? What's that meme? Meme with um. Me with uh, Steve Harvey, where he's like he's laughing in one bit and then he's just leaning forward, biting his nails in the other bit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uncomfortably funny. <laughs> oh, Christ, let's 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 hope, like let's celebrate the the good aspect of it, which is we finally have a minority voice that may hopefully have some influence over over Gary Bettman and the Legion of Doom. I know. I'd love to know what they're going to suggest. I'd, I'd love to see what ideas they come out with because they're all going to be better than anything the league could come out with because the league's fucking stupid and useless. We all know this. Because we'll get onto we'll get to that more a bit later. But how can you possibly think that you will have better ideas to provide solutions to a problem that you haven't lived through? I wonder if the diversity alliance is going to end up including, like you say, if it's going to include all aspects, including obviously LGBTQ and all, and uh, you know, and everything else. And, yeah, indigenous people. Because that would then. That would then just be a monumental, you know, if, if some maybe ex-players could go out and say, okay, yeah, you know, I'm I'm gay and I'm going to go and join the Diversity Alliance to kind of put my voice to this side of it. Maybe that's why, like you say, you know, they're not under the league umbrella. That's a good thing. I think you know, it's it's everybody hopefully pulling together. Off, off the hop, I'd think it would be a better thing to have separate sort of, not factions, but separate committees or organisations. Like a separate body or committee, yeah. Yeah, because if, if you end up, you know, merging... Yeah, you know, the Black Alliance and the LGBTQ Alliance, the Indigenous, etc., etc. Et yeah, you're right. You're that, right. That does really make it as like us against them sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's right, true. We got, we got the <laughs> the people who the NHL are catered towards, the white men, the league, and then oh, everybody else is lobby, lobbying against us. Like, I don't think that you could end up filtering down the message that each group would want to. Uh, would want to do yeah, that. no, you're right. You're right. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe they each have their own kind of separate body. Yeah, and then they could hopefully you know bounce ideas off each other and and do that kind of oh, thing. Oh yeah, and... not not to say they couldn't work in conjunction, but but like we were saying about having people who have lived yeah, the it experience. creates it creates a bad it creates a bad image of a group of old white dudes controlling the NHL and then everybody else, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You you would want someone of of your own community representing you, no matter what your situation is. Like you know, I'm I'm sure, say, Vander Kane or Akeem Alou wouldn't not not knowing their personal lives, but wouldn't necessarily know as much about the experiences of a gay hockey fan as they obviously do as a as a black hockey player, sort of thing. And and yeah, you're right. vice versa. But you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're right. But it's interesting. I'm I'm excited to see what they do. They can be um, they can hold the league accountable. Hopefully, the first first step in a in a long journey. Let's just get Batman out of there. Well, I'll, I'll I'll start for for a competent commissioner, no matter where he or she's from or what their race, creed, or colour is, sort of thing. True, that's actually a good point. Yeah, it doesn't matter where they're from. Can we just have a good commissioner? I'll do. Yeah, I don't care if he's from Mars. Just have him be like good at his job instead of what we have to put up with. I just I wonder. If we're, how long is it going to take to get you know a, a person of colour in an NHL front office? Like I've said a million times before, in, in regards to women's hockey, or I've said a million times, anything revolving around the non NHL NHL side of the game, wouldn't you just do it just for the great PR? Wouldn't you just think as the league now, you know what? Let's get some you know LGBTQ or let's get someone who's black into like a real prominent position because it'll make us look good. Wouldn't you do it for purely selfish reasons, if nothing else? I think. I think. Do you know what I mean? Like, doesn't do they not have that conversation? Like, even on a stupid level, wouldn't you think they'd do that? I think part of the problem is you'd you'd have to really hire the right person to be the first. Oh, I agree. You couldn't just do it as a pure PR stunt because that could so easily backfire. 
Oh no, but there'll, but there'll be tons of people out there, wouldn't there, who could do it? You tell me you couldn't do Bill Daly's job? For fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, I mean, anyone if, couldn't do Bill mm, Daly's job? Of course I could, Dan, because I'm a white man. But that's true. So I'm automatically qualified, and I've watched a hockey Good game, point. so I'm sorted. But if, if you're talking, if you're talking a GM role or like a team president role, like running a team, imagine how easy the backlash would be if the first black GM was hired and then their team is shit. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do I you know agree. I, mean? I agree with what you're saying. But how many white GMs just fucking suck at their job? Yeah, but it, We're not talking about the Sabres two weeks ago. But it would fucking be... Fucking hell. It would be different, though. It would be different, like... I think about... I how, agree. ...how people view the Atlanta Freshers just before they got moved to Winnipeg, when they just went out and traded for... Like, they selected Evander Kane in the draft, they traded for Johnny Oduya, they traded for Dustin Bufflin. There was, like, a very visible, conscious effort to get more people of colour into the into the organisation, which is obviously a good thing, but if you're doing it from maybe a slightly conceited standpoint, that's not going to go over well, especially if it backfires. I agree, but... But you're, you're right at no, some point. I, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. If if, if there was a black GM and he was shit at his job, I wouldn't think he was shit at his job because he was black. I'd think he was shit at his job because he's paid Jeff Skinner $9 million a year. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I see what you're saying. Other hockey fans would just say, well, clearly he can't do his job. He's black. What does he know about hockey? Because oh, they're fucking idiots. It's, it's like the woman in... But yeah, I see in, what you're saying. It's Switzerland, isn't it? I think it's Byrne, isn't it? Go on. Who had the Who had the female assistant coach? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Assistant coach, would you? Whoever breaks the barrier has to have some modicum of success because otherwise, like you say, you're, you're gonna there's gonna be a backlash of well, see, this is why because you know minorities don't understand hockey, women don't understand hockey, gay people don't understand hockey, whatever, and you end up perpetuating against the amongst like the grey masses, the racist, sexist, homophobic grey masses. You perpetuate the stereotypes of this is our sport. That's why it's been like this for a hundred years. Yeah, you're right. That's so fucking dumb, though, isn't it? It's so dumb. How many GMs are just so fucking terrible at their jobs? They're so shit at their jobs. And again, there's no... We've said this so many times. There's no punishment in NHL for being bad at your job. There's no punishment. What's the punishment? You either get fired or you get an immensely talented player because your team sucks so bad. Like, it's insane. I think it's... You could be such a shit GM and there's no punishment. It's You have to have, like, a, a little bit of success to start with, though. You can't be shit right out of the gate because there are plenty of people who've had like one season, two seasons, been really bad, and you never hear from them again. Yeah, if you true. have one, if you have like one good playoff run, if you win the cup once, you got a job for life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you if you can get a team to post an above five hundred season, you've got a job for life in the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. It's like if you score forty points, you got a job for life in the NHL. It's just yeah yeah we're still where we are aren't we long way to go but we're getting there i think it's it's something but we're, we're starting we're starting you know it's not going to change overnight sort of thing is it yeah like we said last week okay it's taken us a long enough time to get here and it's taken enough fucking pushing and prodding from all corners to at least for something to happen so now something's happening it, it's a good thing absolutely all righty should we start the show <laughs> yeah oh. we should we should we will we will this week oh, okay I thought you were going to say something else. Are you going to say something else then? Well, I was going to say something else, but we should start the show, probably. All right, let's start the show. Tell you what, it's going to be fun trying to edit out all my hay fever sniffs out of this. Oh, mate, is it hitting you hard? Fucking hell. I sound like I'm on a Koozie's fucking birthday party. <laughs> Jesus. As I mentioned earlier, the league sometimes does have a slight problem and can't seem to get out of its own way. With that said, <laughs> Will, what were your thoughts on the beautifully produced Tyler Sagan video that the NHL put out and then removed after three hours the other day? Now, Dan, I'm absolutely gutted to say that the first I heard of this Tyler Sagan video was that the NHL had taken it down and I haven't been able to oh, find no. it since, so I haven't even seen it <laughs> all I see is these oh, comments you around it. oh this awful what What even was it so it was about him going to the protests in Dallas yeah yeah it was essentially a, a, a fluff piece 
about one awesome guy Tyler Sagan is with all his inst- all these Instagram comments. So it's the you know the picture of him kneeling. It was yeah. that picture, and then it was lots of Instagram messages just kind of floating up and then floating away, saying, "Oh wow, it's so great to see a player like Tyler Sagan doing this. What a guy!" and all this kind of thing. It oh lo- honestly, God. it looked like it had been produced by a PR firm to show what amazing social media pre- presence Tyler Sagan has. <laughs> It was fucking awful. It was awful. Mate, I scrolled those Twitter comments for about an hour. I had so much fun. I had so much fun. Mate, that's like... How... <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Like, why... So they they pounced on independent player activity and effectively tried to pass it off as their own their own sort of doing and use it for their own PR. Yeah, it was, it was basically, look at this white player... <laughs> doing something really good. <laughs> That's what it boiled down to. And don't get me wrong, it was good that he did it. As we said, this is a good thing. A player is, and it's the same as Adeno Nochara walking in the, you know, on a on a on a march in the week, on a protest march. That that's a great thing to see. But don't then, <laughs> it's like don't then it. turn it into what you turned it into. It's, it's yes, good. it's good these players are doing these things, but they should not be lauded for this because yeah. they were silent for so long. So long, the NHL chose to highlight what great work is being done in regards to hopefully Hocken being more race friendly by showing a white guy and all the people lauding this white guy. It's like fucking hell. You're so bad at this. They're so bad at this. It's like How is it possible? Giving a dog a treat for not shitting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you so bad at this? Their social media team is the fucking worst. And that's like. I don't know. I, th- I thought generally this is very stereotypical of me, but generally social media managers are young and like at least have some some understanding of of PR in in the modern world. But ah, uh, I don't know. Clearly not. I mean, they're not the guy. The guys and girls who work in the social media team for the NHL. Do they not see the other NHL team social media stuff that they do? I mean, there are some really really good teams like the hurricanes pr you know social media team is really good the golden knights social media team is really good do they not look at those and think oh we should be doing stuff like that okay that makes sense but just putting a white guy at the front of it i mean i know like christ if if it had just been like a bit the picture of him at the protest and like a little bit of blurb saying yo we're so proud to have tyler sagan represent the nhl and hockey as a whole etc etc yeah, he he is who we should all. You know, his actions are what we should all aspire to, and more sort of thing or whatever. Just a little thing, fine. Yeah, nothing really that wrong with that. But like you say to <laughs> to have a video with, because I've found some screenshots now of <laughs> <laughs> of all these comments just coming up. Like, yeah, like the fucking Tyler Sagan fan club, and it's it's not only. It- embarrassing for, for the league sorry to cut you off but it's not only embarrassing no, it's from, fine. from like a PR point of view but it is a bit like I don't know it's it's jumping on the, the protest against police brutality and over trying to overshadow it with your own PR for your player I don't want to say your own player's PR because I, I, as far as I'm aware Tyler Sagan doesn't work for the NHL as a, as a social media manager but maybe he does yeah. and that would maybe he does look at like this <laughs> yeah this, that would do you know what if it turned out years down the line that Tyler Sagan was the head of the NHL's PR team I would go oh right it makes, now it makes sense now I get it it's actually his mum he's trying to promote himself now I get it that makes sense fair, fair <laughs> like in some weird twisted way no, yeah nothing wrong with that that's more respectable but oh my god and you know what it's fine if you include a little piece about Tyler Sagan and Zdeno Chara okay this is what hockey players should now you know we should be doing this all the time you know, it's good that we're finally. It's good that we're finally doing this because admitting that you haven't done it before, that's a step. Mm. But then also include a five seconds of showing Akeem Ali talking about something, five seconds of you know J T Brown raising his fist. Christ, even show Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Just you know, you can't just have a, a video of just one white guy <laughs> doing something and then everyone going, "Oh my God, it's amazing," because <laughs> he's white. But where, would, where would we be if Tyler Sagan hadn't kneeled, Dad? <laughs> I, I shudder to think. Oh, dear. The worst thing is, as well, the worst thing is, you just know in sort of 10 years or so, 
some kid's going to say to some dad somewhere, so how did the revolution of like, you know, really good race relations start? And some, and some dad's going to go, Sonny boy, sit down. Come here, gather around. Let me tell you about a player called Tyler Sagan. <laughs> Around. This, this like, going to be like, wow, she's like Gandhi or Jesus. <laughs> yes, he was, son. Yes, he was. <laughs> oh my God, Dad, who who is that man who they replaced the statue of Abraham Lincoln with? <laughs> <laughs> Once time that was a young Canadian boy by the name of Tyler Sagan. <laughs> Just fantastic. Just fucking. Bro- I tell you, you missed the treat with that with those Twitter comments. Honestly, some of them were just. God, I feel like the I'm internet is now. undefeated. It was so good. It was so much fun just watching the league get destroyed. <laughs> I, feel, I feel a bit bad for for Sagan in, in some ways. Yeah, I don't think it had anything to do. I don't. I really don't think it had anything to do with it. And I just don't think it was ever like we like we said. I mean, he's the, the issue he's got with him doing it is that people are going to say we should have done this years ago. So he can't really win. But at least it's a start it's better than him not doing anything at least he's gone out and said right you know what okay i'm starting today i've got to try and do something i've got to make a difference it's too far kind of thing and that's fine but to then lord it up as something is wow <laughs> it, mental. It's especially for I, I, I don't want to do too much on it because we've already done it but for for sagan specifically like you know all due respect to the man's character nowadays but for a guy who was driven out of boston for supposedly partying too much like general misbehavior and then you know the issue was some tweaks he supposedly well he sent and he claims he didn't when he first moved to dallas to to have a player that didn't necessarily have a good reputation as a good character guy showing at least showing some sort of representing some sort of personal evolution personal growth yeah it's a great thing it's a great thing and then of course uh, john tortorella came out this week and, and said that he's now changed his stance on the on the silent protest during the national anthem. Yeah, we'll we'll and fucking, he now understands. Yeah. We'll wait and see talks. We'll wait and see, bro. <laughs> Thanks for the message. Yeah. As soon as that as soon as that first play kneels, you get a clip round the ear from Tortorella. Like I knew you were lying. I knew you were lying. And I, I we keep saying it, I don't want to be that guy again. The amount of people in the threads who were uh, cheering for this guy who had a wrong opinion in the first place <laughs> and no. then changed it to the right opinion and everyone's going oh well done torts real class there real class like no he was wrong in the first Classy. place there, there are plenty of people in in the sport who have been silent for too long and now coming out <laughs> and there's yeah. there's an element of okay let's wait and see what you're gonna do but good on you for now but to have someone who actively was against this precise issue <laughs> to start with I know if you sit for the end from your sitting for the game you motherfucker it's yeah. <laughs> nah that's not how it fucking works I don't know if you get this or not maybe it's an older person thing or maybe our generation and your maybe my generation and your generation it didn't matter as much to us but it's a piece of fucking music assigned to a country no. who gives a shit really I who think... could give a shit about that piece of music who cares for, for ours especially it's not even like I love England or I love Britain. It's I love the Queen. That's got fucking dick all to do with anything. Yeah. Obviously, it's not our anthem being protested that it fucking should be. It's just a it's just a piece of music. It's just a flag, like, and it's yeah. Not that we need to to go off and, and explain why the the protests against the flag and kneeling for the anthem were they were a big deal, but they weren't disrespecting what they were. Yeah, they weren't disrespecting the anthem, they weren't disrespecting the flag. But it's just so obvious that that's not an issue. It's, I saw a great little thing, it was a sign someone had at a protest that was like, if you were a true American patriot, you'd realise that, you know, the Confederate flag and the Nazi flag have, have lost both wars against America, sort of thing. Or worded much better than that, but so many people that claim to be patriots don't stand up for or represent what the countries have stood up for and represented in the past. Oh yes, the the Confederate flag. Then it's the the NASCAR said that they're banning it, aren't they? From any and all races they see it at, it's it's completely banned. I really don't know how much I'm taught. I don't, I really don't know how much I know about this, but I I am aware it happens there. But I'm not sure how prominent the Confederate flag is at NASCAR events. Oh man, because I know that NASCAR is a southern thing. I think I think more it's, than a northern thing. I, I think at the very least. 
like Nazca, not NASCAR is associated with the Confederate flag, but like the other way around. You know what I mean? Like if you love the Confederate flag, you probably love NASCAR. Yeah, you're right. Is and the... to be fair, if they have to ban it, <laughs> it mustn't. Be... It can't just be like the odd one here or there, can it? I mean, it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing that they are banning it. But it does also feel a bit like, mm, where have you, where have you been? Where have you fucking been? Did you did you see the um, the driver who's retired because they won't allow the Confederate flag to be waved? <laughs> no, I think get out. The, the guys, the guy's name's you Rick, fucking loser. Rick Cancelo, Cancelo or something like that. It's a, it's not. Hey Rick, you're a fucking loser. How about that? Well, well, it's funny you mentioned that specifically, Dan, because somebody posted his NASCAR stats. So it had it had like wins, podiums, fastest laps, um, pole positions, etc. And then like percentages for all those. And um, yeah, he was fifty years old and had zeros across the board. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you won't be fucking missed, Rick. <laughs> right. So that's like me retiring from the NHL then. <laughs> it doesn't fucking make it. It's nothing. Anyone can retire from anything they're not fucking good at, can't they? And don't be like, I think he was a he was a race a racer, a racist and a racer. You know what? I get it, but yeah, <laughs> like a guy with zeros right. across the board is retiring. Right. Right, oh no! Please don't leave. Please. Oh, he's gone. Come what back. a shame. Oh, no, no. You fucking like loser. Go and fucking me. suffocate yourself with your Confederate flag. You can. You're going to give up. Like you're so racist to a, to a point that you're addicted to the fucking KKK, not the original KKK that lost the fucking war to your beloved America three hundred years ago, whenever it was. That you're so addicted to that ideology that you're going to give up. I would assume a handsome salary to be a NASCAR driver. <laughs> your only wage. Just for the sake of publicly announcing that you're a fucking racist. Yeah. It's like. And again, for a piece of fucking cloth with like some design on it. Fuck me. Fuck me. What a bunch of fucking losers. Waste men. Absolute waste yeah. men. There is. <laughs> Laughable. There, there's a. On the, on the, <laughs> on the nicer side of, of NASCAR news, there is a racer. Bubba Wallace. I was thinking Bubba, but I thought nope. I can't just say Bubba without any fucking <laughs> any yeah. uh, any uh, any proof of that. Bubba Wallace, the only black NASCAR driver, is uh, in the in the NASCAR's return. I think this week, next week, is going to wear a, a have his um his car wrapped in like a, a BLM uh, ice thing whatever you call it like skin. motif yeah motif yeah so it's an all black car with the three fists and, and black lives matter sprayed all over it so fucking shout out cool. to you Bubba Wallace big man that's the end of uh, the NAS car section of two Brits one puck for this week <laughs> <laughs> two Brits one NAS car join, join us again next week <laughs> get out NAS car chat Jesus fucking like People like what they like and that, especially when it comes to sport. There are plenty of sports I don't enjoy and don't get. And like Formula One is definitely one of them. But fucking NASCAR, mate, like Jesus fucking Christ. No, I can I I can get <laughs> as we delve further into the mind of men who like watching cars go really fast. I can understand. I can get it. I can get it because I was I was when I'd first passed my driving test. I think nothing of going out for a drive and thinking, I'm going to go on the motorway and go quite fast because that's like kind of cool. And I, again, I just grew out of it and now I just do the speed limit because I'm a normal human being. Yeah, like But I, I can kind of see, I can kind of see if you're paid professionally to get on a track and go as fast as you can, how that's exhilarating and adrenaline pumping and fun. Yeah, but and what, even what watching it, it to it. Yeah, but even watching it to a point, I, I can understand it. I can understand it. It's the same as watching any. It's similar watching any race. You're just racing cars. It's people who like going to athletics, or people who like going to horse racing, or do you know what I mean? I can, I can get it. I think, I think with with athletics, though, you, there's some point of reference sort of thing for how fast those people are going. You get me? Yeah, but there is with cars. Yeah, but still, I think. Okay, say watching it on telly at the very least. It's like we were talking about earlier with massive numbers, I think, behind the scenes. The, all those cars are going 200 miles an hour or whatever it is, so there's no 
point they're all just moving as fast as each other so it's not like fucking look at him go it's like all right they're all just moving in a I circle guess. 500 times and then i guess when you watch you say bolt basically do cartwheels over the finish line you think oh fuck exactly. like it's so fast but even, <laughs> it's ridiculous even if you're not watching bolt there's an element of like okay i'm a human being i run so and and there's actual differences whereas from what i've seen of of most motorsport you get an established order and maybe a couple of overtakes or whatever here or there but generally it's not like it's not like fucking lewis hamilton's going 200 miles an hour and dick dimbleby's going 120 miles an hour or whatever there's no yeah. naked eye evidence of it's not fucking Conor mcdavid blasting past Roman opponent like is it yeah fair. that's a good point that's a good point Oh, yeah. that's that's really enough NASCAR <laughs> okay yeah please <laughs> uh, we're on Spotify iTunes Stitcher Google Podcasts YouTube and Downtime replacing statues and if you could leave a five star review for us on iTunes that'd be really good as always we're brought to you and sponsored by Wave Intel the season will be back soon this is a personal guarantee so let Wave Intel help you look cool on hockey zoom calls by giving you all the information you need with their easy to read data sheets on players and teams that way, when one of the first seeds goes out in the playoffs, you can explain why and look really clever. Wave Intel, online and on Twitter, being smart, so you don't have to. Your boy Sean Shapiro had a tweet this week asking about if a uh, a goalie should win the Hart Trophy, or even could win the Hart Trophy. Never, never going to happen. <laughs> never has happened, never will happen. I would hate to think what would happen to the world and our viewpoint of goalies should a goalie ever win the Hart Trophy. Only bad things could happen. This was brought up, of course, because if you've gone to Natural Statric, folks, and taken a look at the statistics of goalies, as I have this week, your eyes may pop out of their head at how well Connor Hellebuck has been playing for the Winnipeg Jets. Well, shall I, shall I, uh, shall I throw some numbers at you? As I'm, of course, Mr. Statistics. Isn't, isn't his goal, goal saved above average just, like, offensive? <laughs> Like seven is what it is, right? The next guy, or something like that. So, the best goal in the league this season is Tuukka Rask. <laughs> Numbers wise, no. This is this is kind of leading to a point. Okay, okay. Save percent. So save percentage. His is nine. So what I did was let me start again. I went to natural stat trick. I went to the goalie section and I put in goalies who'd played at least one thousand five hundred minutes this year to kind of get rid of like kind of the lower down backups who don't really do that much that gave me a list of i think of about 31 32 save percentage wise goals against wise goals saved above average wise tuka rask is the best goalie now tuka rask has played a thousand less minutes than connor hellebuck right? jesus connor hellebuck is fifth in save percentage so rask is 941 hellebuck is 929 Tuka Rask has played 41 games. Con Hellebuck, by the time the season had finished, had played 58 games. Fucking hell. And that was at the point the season had finished. So there's a fair, fair, fair point. He would have got in another, what, six or seven, at least? You'd have thought so, but they played 71, so they had 11 left. Yeah, seven games, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. So uh, Tuka Rask's time on ice is 1855. Hellebuck's is 2701. And then a couple, a couple of these, right? A couple of these are amazing. Tuka Rask, shots against, 871. Connor Hellebuck, 1,458. <laughs> Tuka Rask, expected goals against, 58 and a half. Connor Hellebuck, 115.6. <laughs> yep, re- reasonable. Listen to this, right? This is the best one. Tuka Rask. High danger shots against, 186. Connor Hellebuck, 412. <laughs> 412. Oh my God. Tuka Rask, high danger saves, 163. Connor Hellebuck, 347. What the fuck? So he's getting, he's getting seven high danger chances against a game. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's making over... Two miracle saves a period. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, unbelievable. Christ. And and like he's second. He's second in goals saved above average. So Tukarask is first on nineteen point six, and Hellebuck is fourteen point three. Now you might think that's a very large gap between those two goalies, and it is kind of a bit like five, I think you know five goals saved above average is quite a big gap. 
But when you consider, when you consider, and we talked about this at the start of the season, the absolute dirty dross of the Jets D this year. It's horrendous. It's horrendous. And Hellebuck is out of his fucking mind this season. It's it's ridiculous. Like and and they would have made the playoffs proper if the season had just stopped now. They'd have been the yeah. first wild card in the West. Which is just incredible. I think if you know as many of you people, including us, were saying at the start of the season, like no chance the Jets play making the fucking playoffs. No. Yeah. I think again it comes back to your definition of the Hart Trophy. If we're talking strictly most valuable player, as in the player who has the most impact, like if you take that player away from the team, which team has the biggest Where are they? Off? Yeah, where are they? It's it's fucking Con Hellebuck with a bullet. It's fucking over. Yeah. It, it, it's his and it's not even close. It's his. It should be his and no one else even gets a second place vote. <laughs> That's how ridiculous it is. It's just all first place votes, all Con Hellebuck, all day, every day, all the time. All time, all my life. It's insane. Utterly insane. That goal in natural statric page is jaw dropping. Jaw dropping. That, that's the thing. Even if you didn't do the advanced numbers and you just saw right there, next number of wins, they were going to make the playoffs, and they he had to play behind this fucking team. Give it, give it to him anyway. But when you throw in the the sheer volume that he had to deal with, like he did not fucking have have an off night at all. He played every night, and every night was a fucking slog to keep his team in it. Mental, but it's gonna go to uh, it's gonna go to Leo Drysdale, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it probably will. It probably will. Fifty-eight games. Fifty-eight, 58 games. Eight. Fucking mental. Do you know what was interesting? Do you know who played? Do you know who played the next most amount of games with fifty-two? Hmm, let me. And there's a big drop off after this. So after fifty-two, in the top twenty-one goalies. It goes down to 47 after that. So so it goes 58, 52, 47. Who played 52 games this season? Freddie Hansen. No. Well, he might be... Actually, let me just go back to my list. He's he got might, like I don't four, think he's on this... He's got to be 47 or something, isn't he? So he's not, he's not in the top 21 in save really? percentage. So he's not on oh, my oh, list. Okay. Yeah, he's not. Oh, well. Let's have a... Have a think. Of course, speaking of not in the top 21 in save percentage, guess how many games Kerry Price, Kerry Price played? Oh, it was around the same, wasn't it? Like 57, something like that? 58, yeah, yeah. Um, 58, there you go. Oh, and Freddie, Freddie Anderson did have 52, so uh, I'm fucking right. <laughs> no way. Yeah, what's his, yeah, but what's his safe percentage? 909. <laughs> Is it 909? Jesus. 909. Not even, I mean, yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, so top 21, safe percentage-wise. Was it Andrew Vasilevsky by any chance? It was Vasilevsky, That's yeah. crazy, isn't it? They've got a decent... Have they got Louis Domingue or someone? Is their backup? No, he went somewhere else. Who is somebody? They've got someone. They've got yeah, they've got um, Curtis McElhenney. Oh yeah, and you'd have thought he'd be. I suppose they they had dug themselves a bit of a hole to start with, so they were probably riding Vasilevsky more than they'd have wanted to. Well, yeah, it's Kate. Okay, we're back on that thing, aren't we? You pay the guy nine and a half million dollars a year. He'd better play sixty games a season for us <laughs> for that money. I mean, in <laughs> in some ways, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in some ways, yeah, he kind of got a good point. He should. He <laughs> should be playing a lot of games, shouldn't he? But that's because he shouldn't be making that much money. You should pay him seven and have him as part of a tandem, like uh, like a yeah, exactly a lovely European goalie who's pretty good uh, from what I've heard. Are you talking about your boy? Uh, I'm talking about your boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you were talking about Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until he dove in seven million dollars a season. <laughs> No, no, I think you say like pay a guy seven million and then have him in a good tandem like oh, Bishop no, and Dobby. No, no. That's what I thought you were saying. Oh, I mean, I mean, I mean old, uh, old Tukarask because he's he's what Tukarask, um, yeah, seven and a half, isn't he, or seven point eight? I think no, he makes he makes seven on the button. I think seven knows. There you go. Fucking there you go. But yeah, yeah he makes seven. Yeah, and then Halak makes two point seven. It's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. It'd be better if um your start was making five point eight though. Well, that's true. It'd be good. That is true. It'd be really good. <laughs> I mean, it'd be great if they were both making 2.7. That's it. Even better. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking beautiful, wouldn't it? But yeah, Dude, I, 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 can't, I, can't oh see, I can't see it happening. He's, I don't, no. he, he should win it, but I don't think he will. And I wonder if he is even going to win the Vesna, to be honest. 
He's, who would win the Vezina? Oh, they probably give it's whoever uh, votes on it, isn't it? They're be, just going to look at it and go, "Who won the most games?" Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah it'd be, right. It'd be <laughs> they don't care. They don't. They're not. Yeah, they don't. Well, they don't care though, do they? They're not looking at it like that. They're not looking like we are. At the stat, they're just going to go, "Who? Which team is the best?" Oh, that team. Yeah, right. They'll they'll see all so the three finalists. Will be your three finalists. Will be Rask, Vasilevsky, and I don't know who uh, else. Bennington. Elvis, maybe. No, I, th- I think I think it'll be Hellebach will be in there. No, Elvis won't get any votes. That'd be mental. I don't know, dude. <laughs> you never fucking know, dear. There's always a wild card in there. That'd be fucking insanity. I can't even. How, how many wins does Elvis Muslikins have on the season, Dad? Uh, I do not know, Will. How many does he have? G- give me a rough guess for a for a Vezina quality goaltender. Oh, how many how many does Elvis have? I am going to guess at sixteen. At uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Oh my god. Thirteen wins. Behind famous world class goaltenders uh <laughs> such as go on, where's a where's a good one? Brian Elliott. <laughs> Martin Jones. Well there we go then. Fucking Whoever, Miko Koskinen, whoever you want. Now, nah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be Vasilevsky, Hellebuck, and who was that other guy we said? Rask. Yeah, those three sound right, actually. I'll, I'll take that. But here's the thing. Maybe Jordan Binnington. Here's why. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Is that AHL star Jordan Binnington? <laughs> that is soon to be KHL star Jordan Binnington. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, sorry. You know what? I apologise. I was wrong before. 47 games it's actually Jordan Binnington has played 50 games this season so far yeah yeah so he's he's third behind Vasilevsky in games played that's crazy isn't it but still but here's why here's why Conor Hellebuck's not going to win the Hart Trophy and it's this is going to sound crazy but it's so simple who was the last goalie to win it Will Carey Price always gets like the, these fucking but oh he's the best goalie in the league and all these player votes and all this shit so the voting crowd are going to say so the last two goalies to win it have been Kerry Price and Dominic Hasek. Are you telling me that Conor Hellebox is as good as them? No, of course he isn't. So he hasn't got a chance for it to even start, has he? I think it's because they're not going to dare. They're not going to dare put him in that category with those two goalies. It's like that whole thing we were saying about reputation. Like Conor Hellebuck will have to. This will now put him in the conversation for future years. If he yeah. had, if he has another season like this, then yeah, he'll he'll get consideration. But I cannot see it happening this time. No. It was like when we discussed the like you know the old decade team, and you said, "Why would they pick Drew Doughty over at Carlson?" I'm like, "Dude, because he's got two rings. It's as simple as that. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's better than him or not. That. That's all they care about. It's reputation." And and before Price had won the heart, he had like Olympic gold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and and Hellebuck doesn't have yeah. any of that. As much as it shouldn't affect who was the MVP of the NHL season for that year, it absolutely does affect the way he's perceived as a player. He's so the MVP of this league this year. Mate, he's fucking, so the MVP. It's fucking ridiculous. It should be. But people will just look at it. They're going to look at it and go, Dominic Hasek, Kerry Price, Connor Hellebuck, really? <laughs> he's got no shot. Fucking who? No shot. It should be, top three should be Hellebuck, Panarin, probably Jack Eichel. I don't know. Would you still not consider Dreisaitl for the season he's had? Now nah, again, because if you're looking at uh, valuable, like the value... If yeah, true. There is there is part of me that's like, if you're not the best player on your team, you can't win the MVP. Yeah, I agree. We're like, back to the whole McDavid thing, aren't we? If if McDavid had been injured for like most of the year or had a really bad year, but the geezer still put on ninety seven points, you can't fucking say that. Yeah, you can't. You can't fucking do it. I agree with the top two though, Panarin or, like Panarin and Hellebox for sure. Like Panarin's just been like his stats. Are, Shout out to Jason from Wave Intel. The stat sheet for Antonio Panarin is is insane. Fucking I mean, off. just what he does for that team off the charts. But then, but that's like why I said, I'd, that's why I'd include. Go on, sorry. sorry, I was going to say that's why I'd include Eichel as the third because then that's three people who are dragging their teams. Granted, Eichel hasn't had anywhere near the success of of either of the other two, but they're playing fucking up above and beyond without any help whatsoever. Yeah, you're right. But then it becomes a thing of, well, they're not in the playoffs, so how good can he be? Yeah, that's... that's We're just back to that again, aren't we? That's the problem. So then you give it to maybe, I don't know. No, I don't even think you can necessarily give it to Nathan McKinnon. You probably can. You could, 
<laughs> you couldn't give it to Eichel because even in a season where <laughs> the league have gone, ah, fuck it, everyone can have a go. The Sabres are still not in. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, but then I'm I'm loath to give it to like yeah, Drysdale or Pasternak or fucking anyone else. Definitely. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't give it to Pasternak. You can't give it to pass that Marsh and Old Bergeron because, like we said before, they, it's, that's just a perfect line combination. They all, you know, they all play well together. Yeah, it's just and, working too well. Yeah, they're all working too well together, rather than one guy is pulling the other two up or something like that. I, I, I could probably, what would I do? I'd, yeah, I'd probably do Hellebuck, Panarin. It's even McKinnon though. McKinnon's got loads of good like greatness around. Like he's got loads of good players around him. He's not even got like they're not even a one line team anymore. Like they now do have a second line, and they've got like decent goaltending. And he is, is McKinnon really like? Is he really dragging them? Like, if he has an off night, well, okay, we've got Landis Skog and Rantanen to come and smash them in. We'll be fine. I, w- I wouldn't say drag him, but if you take him out of that, where are they? He is their best player by a country mile. True. By a country. Oh, freaking out, and it's just we just keep getting to, we just, you just get into semantics, though, don't you, all the time? That's that's the thing, isn't it? That is the thing. Yeah, I think but I agree. You take Pan- you take Panarin out of the, the Rangers and you take Hellebuck, uh, Hellebuck out of the Jets and those both both those teams are fucked completely. The, the Jets is an interesting one because a lot of their forwards had good offensive seasons. They've got like five 70 point players, I want to say. I mean, shout out to Paul Maurice. I mean, what, can I, what a job he's done. What a fucking, what a class act. What a geezer. Well, there's your Jack, and there's your Jack, there's your Jack Adams winner. Oh, it's got to be. Jesus Christ. That's what I wanted to look at. But not well, no, the Jets defensive core again. Tortorella's got to be. I've absolutely lied about the Jets. But oh, shit. Think. Yeah. Of course. Can we have dual winners this year? <laughs> oh, mate. Don't even. They probably would. They. Um... All right, then. Who would you, go on. Who would you take? Who would you take? Would you take Tortorella or would you have Tortorella or what for, for, for Jack Adams? Yeah. That's a really hard Listed one. right now, listed right now on Cat Friendly, this is the Jets' defensive core. Dmitry Kulikov, Josh Morrissey, Neil Pionk, Nathan Bulo, Dylan DeMelo, Carl Dahlstrom, Sammy Niku, Tucker Pullman, Anthony Boteto. It is hard, isn't it? It's hard, but because on the other side, you've got Tortorello who lost his starting goalie and his best player, his best skater. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So on, on one side of it, yeah, the Jets have still got Line A, Shifley, Wheeler, Ehlers, Connor, etc. But then the Blue Jackets still have like Jones and Wierenski, Cam Atkinson's a good player, Nick Felino's fine, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a good player in that. I think you're right. I think Torts gets it by a hair. I think yeah. I think like optically Torts gets it as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I think having a bad D doesn't seem as much of a obstacle to overcome as having your two best players leave the club in the summer that's a that's a better story i think yeah you're right well but then that's the thing with the jets isn't it they're bad deals because one of them decided they didn't want to be there anymore yeah jacob tubal went and got paid eight million dollars which is just insanity it's an eight million eight million dollar deal right there eight million eight yeah <laughs> eight million dollar <laughs> second pair of deal right there are you saying that Tony D'Angelo should be played? I think Tony D'Angelo would be paid fucking eight point eight million dollars. There you go. Hey, Tony's got, he's going to be uh, D'Angelo's going to be down that there. tattoo parlor, isn't he? Getting his Confederate flag okay. lasered off. I thought you were say get his eighty-eight tattoo. <laughs> ah, now we're both on the same page. That's good. Mm. All right, good. last thing. It's good to have the sends back in the news. <laughs> the uh, the Ottawa Senators Foundation is no longer in partner with the Ottawa Senators. Classic sense. It's a classic sense headline. The charitable foundation linked to the team does now not want to be linked to the team, which is just <laughs> just amazing. And the uh, the foundation has rights to use the senators' logo and team trademarks for uh, for char- charitable reasons. And the agreement expires on the thirty first of July, and it won't be renewed. The foundation. Did you know the foundation was criticised in the past by a charity watchdog? No. Yeah. So they found that only less than half of every dollar raised went to recipients that the foundation supported. That's crazy. So it was like 46, 46 cents of every dollar raised went to recipients of the, that the foundation was supporting. That's fucking offensive, isn't it? And the thing was that the, in leaked um, documents that Two Bits One Puck have managed to get hold of, the other 54 cents went to the Eugene Melnick Regeneration Fund. 
So, but that, not really a surprise there. That's the that's the question though, isn't it? Like how much? I assume if they're able to uh, sort of cut ties with the senators, like they wouldn't have been run by Eugene. Eugene wouldn't have had any involvement, and yet they're still. I don't know. It's maybe it's like a, a curse, like a witch's curse. As soon as you put the senator's logo onto your company, like you're doomed to be a fraudster. <laughs> It's interesting you say that, Will. It is very interesting you say that, and I swear this isn't prepped, because joking aside, apparently Eugene wanted more control over the charity. And the charity were like, no, (laughs) there's no fucking way. And listen to this. I swear to God on a stack of Bibles, this is what it said in the article that I read. Will, what would Eugene Melnick like to focus on more? What charities would he like to focus on more? Organ donors. Exactly. He wants more focus on organ donation charities. Folks, I'm not going to do the joke here because you've just written about 10 yourself in about five seconds. The, the annoying thing about Isn't that... Isn't that unreal? But like, the annoying thing with that is like, of course he does because he had his life saved yeah. by an organ donation. Like, that's not... Yeah, but let's not pretend it's just not so he can hoard all the best ones for himself. <laughs> that, that's, why he, that's why he wanted more control of the, uh, the foundation because he saw, ooh... Their pocket, they're they're only um, they're giving forty six cents of every dollar to charity. That's still a massive slice to cut a top off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's, not, there's another twenty six cents in that dollar for old Eugene. Yeah, of course Eugene wants to be in charge of the uh, the organ donation side of things. Uh, someone's on the phone, Mister Melnick. Oh, of course, thank you. Hello, yes, Mister Melnick. It's uh, Mister Robertson, your private physician. We've just had a twenty five year old killed in a car crash. We've got his heart. I'll be right there. <laughs> Fire up my favourite chair. <laughs> yeah. He's just got a dentist chair, but it's been modified. So he just start putting like all these new organs into his body. Isn't that amazing? It's such a sense. It's so sense. It's perfect. It's perfect. The the thing I with with this you know, charity distancing from themselves, like uh, themselves from the sense, I saw it pop up on Twitter and I thought, huh, that's kind of funny, and didn't really give it any more mind until I saw someone I think either Pierre Lebron retweeted or someone retweeted one of his tweets or something. So basically saying there's a lot more to this story, but who the source can't say at the moment because they're still linked to the senators. It's like, hold on a fucking second here. <laughs> oh, God. Get this source in an Uber quickly. Fuck, no, 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 no. Let's get it on record. Let's find out what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm so... I love the idea of just Eugene trying to strong arm the head of the foundation just to put more money in his look have you heard of the brand flats <laughs> any <laughs> it's a it's a cause that really needs your help yeah we've got this cause and it's called the uh mujin yelnik is being sued for a billion dollars charitable foundation <laughs> they need all the money they can get oh god i've never heard of that <laughs> do you guys have a spare <laughs> billion dollars in the budget that you could potentially loan me jesus i just i just the best it's the best the, the fun never stops the fun never stops as i've said a billion times i would love at some point for us to do to try and do a one-off podcast on the senators post so if from sort of 2000 sort of 16 17 onwards just what everything that happened and then everything and just but it'd be such a it'd be such a hard job it ended up being like six hours long or something and you do just We'd have to and wait. things keep happening. That's the thing. We'd have to wait until either Eugene sells the team, or more likely he dies, just yeah. to have like the whole story in totality. Because we'd we'd record it, and then a week later, it'd be like, oh, Nikita Zaitsev has fucking shot one of his teammates on a hunting trip. Alan, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> oh god, I'm surprised nobody got a shot. It has has been shot yet with the centers. Like fucking Cody Cece's out there setting people on fire, and not nobody's <laughs> nobody's shot anyone. The nice still young will. Anything can happen in the next. You know, <laughs> anything could happen in the next twenty five minutes. <laughs> who, know, who knows? <laughs> we we interrupt the unveiling of the PS five to inform you. Then <laughs> <laughs> Connor Brown has had his head cut off by by fucking Logan Brown. Him and Brady Kachuk were rough housing, and obviously tragedy ensued. <laughs> <laughs> as it always was. Was that, was that Tyson Barry? Some somebody was like wrestling in a hotel, and and like 
tore their ACL or something a few years ago, didn't they? Oh, what? You're kidding. Oh, I'm certain. I think it might have been the World Championships. Oh, to I, the Google machine. Oh, mate, I, I wouldn't... Uh, come on, let's have, a, let's have a quick... I'm certain it was Tyson Barry. It was Tyson Barry. Barry injured no wrestling way. teammate at a hotel. <laughs> From 2017. I didn't, oh, mate, he's a fucking legend. Tyson Barry's world championship ending injury was suffered in the hotel room. From uh, from Darren Dreger himself, Barry was wrestling a teammate in his hotel and suffered a leg laceration. A leg laceration? How would you cut your legs so bad Maybe it's in like a, a hotel room? I, I reckon you could. Um, if you caught it at the right angle and you had like a square bed frame or whatever. <laughs> you know what was happening? Trying to fucking power. Whoever... <laughs> Whoever whoever he was wrestling with just said, this is boring. Knife fight? Let's do it. <laughs> just like, let's raise the stakes. No, let's I, have a knife fight instead. I reckon I reckon they just fucking went full WWE on it and whoever it was fucking powerbombed him through the bed and like they <laughs> snapped the, um, what they called the planks. What are they fucking called? Yeah, like the um, support boards that the match yeah, was yeah. set on. Yeah, yeah. Just snap one of those and that just... Cutting off massive gash down the back of Barry's leg. See you later. That is eerily reminiscent of a true story from my life. Shout out to my friends Richard and my old friend Asa. As when we were younger, when we were teenagers, we did have a backyard wrestling federation. Yeah, of course. And in the very first match, which took place in Asa's bedroom, my friend Rick charged Asa and Asa spine busted Rick onto the corner of the bed. And then Rick couldn't walk for about two weeks. Because it fucked up his back. That's <laughs> and I don't mean the corner of the bed on the mattress. He spine busted him onto the uh, the wooden post. The fucking bed frame, mate. <laughs> bed frame right into his back, like right into his spine. And you're just lying there going, Yeah guys, I can't I don't think I can move that well. <laughs> this is like five seconds in. Like shit. They, they should this really is dangerous. They should really have like a disclaimer at the at the start of a wrestling show, really, shouldn't they? Like, they should something, really something like I'm telling like, you not to try that kind of yeah. thing at home. Yeah, just to yeah. just to protect dumb kids from from doing dumb <laughs> things <laughs> and dumb hockey players. To, to be fair, though, to be fair, I've uh, yeah, I've not watched loads of WWE, but the bits I have seen don't see any beds involved. That is true. That is so true. They're not actually protecting themselves from that sort of environment. Unfortunately, that's right. I mean, yeah, don't try this at home or on a bed. Should be the message, really. Don't don't try this or anything similar to this. <laughs> anything that yeah. could be, and especially the hockey world championships. <laughs> <laughs> but if ever you wanted a fucking non endorsement for like how serious your tournament is, like yeah, the players are fucking wrestling in their hotel rooms between games. <laughs> Here's how serious the players are taking it. It's like wrestling each other in between games I, I'm in the bed in the hotel bedrooms. I'm so not engaged. And not receiving enough of a workout from this tournament, this international best on best tournament. I need to fucking wrestle Eric Johnson in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know who it was that fucking that did it to him. Do you know what I always think though? I always I, I never think that's the real story. Ooh, yeah. I always think, no, what were you really doing? This is gonna make you look stupid, that's fine. But what were you really doing? Yeah. You know, like the past and that thing last season, oh, he fell after a Bruins um, social event and hurt his wrist. You mean he was fucking hammered <laughs> and tried to jump off a fucking, I don't know, tried to jump off some lamppost or something. Yeah, what, whatever That's what he really did. Tell me what he really did. Oh, mate, that's fucking beautiful. Anyway, fun to end the show. I enjoyed that. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Will, any last words? My, my last words are... G.I. Tyson Barry is the was the, the shortest person on that roster. You're kidding. Yeah, he was. So I reckon. No way. He was either six foot five Colton Pareko, who did it to him, or six foot two Mike Matheson. That's a good shout, I reckon. Or. Well, Ma- hang on then. Matt Deshane. That clearly shows. That clearly shows what happened. It was just one short joke too many, and he fucking had enough. <laughs> And so he just launched himself. Then it backfired. He, he just missed. launched himself at somebody. What was that? It backfired and he missed. Tried to yeah. Tried to spear someone through through the fucking door and just missed. Yeah. Somebody somebody fucking jabbed him too many times about his height. He's like, right, that's it, motherfucker. Upstairs now. We're gonna wrestle this out. I'm sick of your bullshit. <laughs> wrestle this out. <laughs> 
Fuck me. Oh, dear me. All right. There we go. Take care, everyone. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.